Good morning, folks. We've got earthquakes, new sunspots, hurricane warnings getting more serious, an asteroid, exoplanets, and other top space news, but we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to be looking at the trailing coronal hole, how it angles at the equator. Well, right at that equatorial angling, watch the brightening at the end of the sequence. Those are baby sunspots, born facing Earth and trying to grow this morning. Nice beta magnetism, but the spots do have a lot of maturing to go. We did get one filament lift and release on the southwestern limb, but this is going away from Earth. The solar wind up next, plasma speed dropped out in purple with a slight density fluctuations this morning. We do have slight geomagnetic activity, but are still in the green thus far. Density fluctuations should be leading into the faster stream from the exiting coronal hole on the right. Still got about three more days until the central opening hits us, and we're magnetically connected to it. Two more big quakes of note. Six-pointer struck the Philippines, and a 5.6 in China had large surface energy transfer and sent people running from their homes. Let's go to the hurricane tracks as Florence here is set to hit South Carolina in the Euro model and just slightly up in North Carolina in the GFS model. That will be happening this week. But it looks like the day before that is when this system will reach Hawaii. It is still set to make direct landfall. Folks, we've got a near-Earth object flyby tomorrow. This was only discovered five days ago, and luckily it will pass a bit more than half the distance between us and the moon, doing so just after it crosses Earth's orbital plane. Hopefully nobody forgot about TESS, the new super planet hunter. Well, its first batch of exoplanet candidates is in, and they are now racing to confirm those candidates. If you thought Kepler was a game changer, the era of TESS has officially begun. Folks, NGC 4036 can be spotted from backyard telescopes. If you do head out and try to spot it, try to spot the dusty filaments crossing the viewing angle and an orangish star just right and down from center that is actually thousands of times closer than the galaxy behind it, just right in the way. Last but not least, I don't know if we have any big Pluto fans out there, but the case for its reinstatement as a planet certainly made this enthusiast smile. It is well considered to be the second most complex object in our solar system after Earth, including its subsurface ocean due to geological energy kick-started upon its attainment of spherical shape, which should make it a planet. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we've got a deeper look on that solar forcing chart out last night, and in a few hours we've got your weekly Fly on the Wall podcast. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close here. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.